What happens when Ted Lasso becomes such a hit that Hollywood jumps on that success with a 90-minute feature film about soccer or football? Uh, you get a movie in which the main character should have been Phil Dunphy from Modern Family. Find out next on Trees in Space. <laughs> Welcome, everyone, and in case you missed the thumbnail, this week we watched the 2023 sports comedy, Next Goal Wins. I'm Jason, and I'm here with Nate. And I, I said 2023 because there is another movie, a documentary with by the same name about the same story. And uh, before we begin, before we get into this, uh, please give us a like, subscribe, no, no, put a notification bell on there, feed the algorithm monster because... Um, oh. Please drop a comment. Tell us what you think about this movie and maybe what did we miss? Because we can only get into so much, right, Jason, about these movies that we would love to see you. Yes, that's true. To explain the, the premise of the movie, <clears throat> which is based on a true story, mm. um, director um, Taika Waititi, um, he has uh, Next Goal Wins. It follows the American Samoa soccer team. Infamous for, or infamous, infamous. Uh, infamous for their br brutal 31 to 0 loss to, um, I guess, Australia. I had no idea that was a thing, so I don't know sure how infamous it is. So they get this other coach down on luck. They hire him up uh, to help their team uh, get one goal. All I want to know is, who's coming with me? Who's coming, man? Who's coming with me? Huh? Who's coming with me, man? No, no, don't say that, but the whole premise is the owner wants them to get one goal, because they never scored a goal. Right. Just one goal. One goal. One goal. One goal. It was, um... Uh, I, I think, did love. I loved how uh, every single article of his clothing. Who's had, that? The actor? I mean, the uh, coach. The owner, the FFA, mm. the mm. one goal guy. Every shirt had it. Yes. Like he loved this team, but then they, when he found oh spoilers, when he finds out that they're gonna disband the team, he's like, "All right, well, it's a good run." Yeah. Like, he, nothing he, shook this man. Or any of the people over there in America Samoa, apparently. Oh, I want to live there. I think I do, too. Um, because he goes, here at Fuss... Fuss... <laughs> Fuss... <laughs> and I, there was some cute parts, but mm -hmm. I think they advertised it uh, uh, incorrectly. Yeah. It felt um, in the advertisements that it was going to be like a uh, bad news... Brown bears, bears, news yeah. bears. <clears throat> That's actually um, how I went into this movie. I'm like, this is yes. a bad news bears movie. It's got to be yes. a bad news bears. Movie. It's got to be a Mighty Ducks movie, a Cool Runnings movie, um, where these underdog come back and you know compete and just. And I guess it kind of does that. I mean, let's be honest. This is off of the documentary by the same name, which is all about the transgender person in the team, and that was kind of a side story. But it was so side story, it could have been left out, and you still have the movie, and they didn't get it paid enough homage, I don't think. Uh, I will say this. I said this last night, and I'll say this again. The actress for whom they got to play the trans in this movie, mm -hmm. beautiful lady. Well, that's what he was at. He asked me, because uh, we actually watched it together. Yeah, we watched it together. Holding hands, eating popcorn from, you know. Seven miles away. Yes. Um, and she go. He asked me, "Do I if I thought that was actually a male or a female playing that part, or if the person was actually a transgender actor, actress?" Um, I have not looked into this since this conversation to find out if this person is a transgender actress, actor. I don't know what this person's pronouns is. So, and yeah. I thought initially it was just a. I thought it was a man playing as a transgender, and then more the movie got, I go, that's an actual transgender person. Yeah. 
Yeah, and uh, that uh, actress very good at her job. Oh my god, beautiful! Uh, the the scene in the bathroom. I don't want to spoil this too much, um, but the scene with the coach and her mm-hmm. in the bathroom, uh, leading into the beginning of the the big game. Mm-hmm. I think the camera angles were very well shot. Like it was a very well acted scene. I think this was. Like this may be one of the second movies I've seen Michael Fassbender in, and God, that was the best acting he's done in anything I've seen. Well, he's uh, um, I've seen him in quite a few things. He's, a, he's an excellent actor, I think, and I think that scene was <clears throat> a very, like you said, a very good scene. But like I said, they didn't lean enough into her story because this movie wouldn't have been made if it wasn't for her. It has nothing to do with thirty-one to zero. Then the guy score the score goal. It became who it is because of that character, because of Jeannie. Gina? Um, Jeannie? I don't... Her her dead name is Johnny, I think, but... Yes. Um, So if that's what you want, because, yeah, she was in the bathroom crying for the reason she was crying, but they did not show her journey about how tough it was to do what she was doing in the world she was in. It just well, kind of I think, touched on it. Everything else right, was and kind I, of like... I almost wonder if they did that because there is a documentary about her journey, and maybe this yeah. was kind of more about the team. And I think it was more or less like a come to America Samoa, or American Samoa, where mm. nobody realized that it's actually called american samoa because i didn't i did not know american samoa and samoa were two different places me either and the the fact that at during one point they're like i'm just not feeling it coach and he's like what the fuck does that even mean what do you mean you're not feeling it you're in the game like soccer is life like and it's the fact of like well yeah but here we're just you know we what once a month or once a day they just sit and pray for like every you know, shuts up. down yeah yeah i just uh and when he was in the like you're talking about when like we i'm not feeling it he goes what well, films have to do with anything and the one guy we're talking about who owns it whatever is like well it does matter we that's what we do here we it's how we feel about things it's important and you know what feels good winning winning feels good Losing sucks. I don't care who you are or what game you're playing. You might not be competitive, and you lose a game, and you're like, okay, that's fine. I'm I'm not broken over it. I'm not breaking my TV because my Dolphins lost to full. Anyways, that's fine. But winning feels good. It does. It makes, especially as a team, there's nothing like that. So if you want to feel better, America Samoa, win a game. <laughs> Now, something else I took out of this movie, too, and there was a lot of, oh, he's handsome. Oh, that's a handsome man. There was a lot Uh, of good-looking people. A lot of beautiful-looking men, like ladies. Ladies. Go to American Samoa. Go to American Samoa. Or any of those islands, you're going to find yourself a very, very good-looking man. Or a really heavy set strong man like the police chiefs, whatever. Rambo. I loved his character. Yeah. Rambo was his name. Yeah. He was. All he right. Was, it only works once. Let's write that down. Yeah. It's like, oh my God. <laughs> I'm like, okay, my, my sirens aren't working. So he has the, the, the megaphone and he's going, wee, wee, wee. He's pulling over the coach. Oh, Lord. There was some humorous parts here. Um, uh, you know, I think the the worst part about this movie was whenever Taika Waititi showed up. I loved how the the beginning when he sat down in the meeting, mm-hmm. and they have the uh, the the Kiwi dude like going through the stages of denial as yeah. he's going through them. Oh, and yeah, here we are. Too. And then finally, my favorite acceptance. And then he shot through each one as if the the, the the five stages of grief happened in a half a minute. It could happen over years, but they're like, oh, and here's this one. That was <laughs> that was very funny. I 
uh, I was going to say, I also felt like at some point, was it Gia and the coach were totally going to hook up? Who's Gia? Isn't that the, the, the chick? Gia, oh, you mean Gia? The, yeah. <clears throat> well, no, I, I felt that kind of a little bit, but I'm glad it didn't go down that uh, because obviously it didn't happen. And anything based on a true story, it, they can take liberties, which he says at the beginning of the movie. Mostly truths or whatever he says. They were just showing how a coach and a, a, a player can become close. Yeah. I I guess I just, they had such great on-camera chemistry that it seemed like they really had, like, like, I don't know, seemed like they went to war together. Like, they just, I don't know how to explain it right. Yeah. Um... At least towards the end. Like, I guess I'm still reflecting on that one good, real, like, heart-wrenching scene. There's, well, like, two was, or three of those moments. People can just be close and take care of each other. And that's what this relationship was. There was no romance. There was no sexual whatever. It was just two people take, helping each other and becoming close. Kind of like you and I. See? It's a guy love between two guys. See, that can happen, but in movies, they want to push that romantic agenda and stuff. And and I think, obviously, they didn't want to go away from the true story of it, because those two never hooked up. But I also think, because of the the movie itself, of this person being a transgender, and him being a heterosexual male, if that would have happened, I think they would have got a lot more flack and stuff. And so? With a... Yes, because there's a whole lot of people out there who says a homosexual male is not going to hook up with a male that looks like a female. He's just not going to do it. I mean, and they're going to say that don't happen. And it does. I mean, it just it really does. It does. It does. This is a conversation not meant for this program. <laughs> we are not taking a stance either way. Oh, Lord, this is all not going to be in the video. <laughs> no. I feel like we might need to re cut sling load and restart from scratch. No, no, no. We got plenty. Just stuff. burn the whole motherfucker down. <laughs> I loved when he rode her ass in the beginning of the movie. Like, you going to show up. Figuratively, the... not literally. Yeah. Like... You know, who is, oh, great, you're the trainer. You know, great, you're right on time. And you're just like, no, I'm your forward. Yeah. Well, everybody else got here on time. What? Why, why did you? Get you? Yeah. And then when she was, like, twirling her hair, she's like, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. You're playing soccer. Like, this isn't, like, I loved that, that he treated her like a player on the team. Abs you know what? That is absolutely true. Not different, not better, not worse, just like. I mean, they and, and when he went to quit, and she came to his place and gave her gave him the uh, food and the bag or whatever, and she apologized to him. And he apologized to her and stuff. See, they they got a good relationship, so I'm glad they didn't go down the yeah the uh, thing of having to make it romantic because it wasn't necessary. And oh, but well, it turned out that it wasn't the it was. I don't want to say romantic. It was a bonding. Yes nurture relationship as yes. a father daughter style than anything yes, it's else. a relationship that a lot of military folks go through when they get like you said they fight a war together you know all these gi people aren't you know kissing each other you know, they're just close now because they shared experiences but i knew almost halfway through the war before that that the daughter the voicemails should we talk about those voicemails we did not <clears throat> no should we should we your because call I mean, 18 voicemail like that. You just felt something weird. Like, he's just not talking to his daughter. No, that can't be the reason. There, there's a underlying darkness there that they just... And how you can marry that up with this trying to be a comedy, you know, a real-life situational comedy type thing. I don't know if... They had to bring it up. It had to be brought mm -hmm. up. But I, I don't know how they could have done that better. I really think it was a very well-put-together movie, and it definitely exceeded... Um, any expectation I had. Uh, Rotten Tomatoes scores it at 55%. 
which is kind of low for the kind of movie it is in the main character because they, you're usually more on the uh, liberal leading side. I I actually I think I agree. I think 55% is a little low for this movie. Um, and the audience, which is you and I, have rated this thing at 72%, which is, you know, that's saying that the people are more accepting, the average Joe <laughs> is more accepting of this movie than the experts. And that's weird to me. Almost like there's a dynamic shift going on here. I don't know, but I think we need to hear from the people. Let's hear from the people. Five star review. So Mandy H. Love this movie. It had a heart. It made me laugh and tear up. I love taking the piss out of the Aussies. It was so fun. Mm. When the Australian dude showed off that 31 to nothing tattoo. Yeah. I was like, oh my God, that's so awful. <laughs> but I, I mean, mean, even if it's a bad tattoo, he still was part of the 31. team that won 31 and nothing in the FIFA World Cup. Yeah, and that, that, that's, well, in the, I guess, qualifying or whatever. The point is, that's, yeah. it was so poor. And I know that it really happened. And for people who watch this movie, it's not like this team, you know, won the World Cup or even challenged for the World Cup. Like most of these other kind of underdog stories, like they get at least the championship or like Rocky and they get, you know, go toe-to-toe -to, -toe to the end, but they still lose. No, that doesn't like that happen. Uh, uh, Richard G for the one star below review says, "At heart, this should be a great movie with inspirational issues, but it's just too silly. Does not land on the emotional note, and poorly written slash directed. Cool runnings. This isn't. Well, he's right, but it wasn't. We believe it was supposed to be cool runnings because that's how it was advertised. But it's not. That's how I referred to it. I still refer to it as cool runnings because I forgot it was called Next Goal Wins. <laughs> it's just, it, he's right. It doesn't have the emotional. It could have had a lot more emotion to it. I mean, a lot more considering the darkness in the different things and that they could have. Yeah, they could have really messed them up. Um, Julian F. Just about perfect. What a lovely movie about finding yourself and letting go of prejudice and preconceived notions. Probably the best film I've seen all awards season and definitely one to watch again. When is award season? Now-ish? <laughs> okay. That's uh, fair. Um, I will say this is probably one of the most beautiful movies I've seen all year. Like for the cinematography? Yeah, maybe heart meaning. Like, because I yeah. definitely, I, there was a point where I teared up last night during the movie. And I don't know if it was because of the movie itself or just any arraying of anything, but it caught me in the feels. I actually, I don't know. I may surprise you with how I, how many stumps I give this movie. Uh, David B., despite what you may watch in this trailer, this is not a friendly film. Family, this guy thinks it's not a family family friendly film. Like I said, there's a lot of people out there. Like you said, if he kissed that transgender girl that done the fit, and this is those type of people. Weird humor, poorly developed storyline. This story has more possible has possibilities, and you keep wanting it to be good, but it never arrives. Um, I could see a very conservative person saying that this is not a family friendly movie because they are really stuck in the men are men, women are women you, you, you know, you have dysphoria in your brain if you want to be the opposite sex so, and they don't want their kids seeing something like that, uh, but at the same token, they should want their kids to see something like that because even if you believe that, you still should believe in acceptance and tolerance so, and treating everyone equally and that's what this movie did absolutely, yeah uh, but I do understand his, um, you're waiting for it to get good it never arrives. It, it does it's never been to... bad. It wasn't bad at any point. No, it wasn't a bad movie at all. I think it was a good movie throughout the entire picture. It just, like you said, it it was missing that client like that. It, it never got to a peak because it never really had a valley. It yeah. Just, yeah. So, and uh, the WTF, Ma Michael M. I'm going the next goals on Tuesday. 
So he hasn't seen, this is a five star review, by the way. He hasn't gone and seen it yet. I'm going. The next goal's on Tuesday. Wow. Um, I'm already a five star review. <laughs> that's a, that's a good job. I yes. hope that this movie exceeded your expectations of your five star review. <laughs> yeah, so, um, okay, we've talked about it. I just said that it didn't really peak, so it really didn't valley. And uh, they could have leaned into the transgender conversation a little more. Uh, they could have made a little more comedy to it. It just kind of sat there marinating for an hour and a half. Um, tasty, but not overly saturated and not underly saturated. Um, like, you know, you know, um, chicken from Nate's favorite place. Is it, Mariah Carey chicken? It's Mariah Carey chicken. Mariah Carey fried chicken. Come on down. <laughs> open every Sunday. So saying that, uh, Fassbender defined, there was that couple scenes that acted well together. Um, I, I don't think anybody was, you know, I wasn't blown away by any performance. Nor did I think any performance sucked. I was very believable. All of it was very believable. So I'm going to give it. Uh, I'm going to give it two trees. I think Michael Fassbender was a very poor choice as the lead character in this movie. I really didn't believe him as a. I don't know. I just something was lost with him. I don't know what it is, uh, but I think. The acting was done very well. I think, like you said, it's just a very just. It's a it's an even kill movie. Like there's no peak, there's no valley. It's just very neutral. Um, and I don't mean to say make this as a bad, but if you have an A, B, C, or D, you pick C because it's in the middle. So I'm gonna give it two trees and a stump. Because it's right in the middle of five trees. And like I want to give it three, but I think it's just a little too much. So two points. That's fair. That's fair. So thank you, everyone, for listening to us. You got Nate's opinion of this movie, my opinion of this movie. What is your opinion of this movie? Please. That's right. Leave a comment. Like, subscribe. Let us know what you think, what you want. Um, and we appreciate you watching us because we know you don't have to. And uh, come back next Monday for our next installment of Trees in Space.